What's going on y'all? It's Josh and Kelsey. We are back with another video. All right, y'all. Today we have a very interesting conversation. We're actually speaking to a lady named Miss Verna. Now, Miss Verna was involved in a very serious, serious situation where she unfortunately lost her life at a, the age of 40. Um, it's, it's a story, y'all, that it's full of all kinds of turns and twists. Really, it's like a, like a show. It's uh, stories filled with lies, double murders, politicians, and a little bit of old school Southern justice. So, Kelsey, you want to tell us just a little bit more about Ms. Verna and this story? Yes. Ms. Verna Taylor is from Louisville, Kentucky. Around 1920, her father moved the family out to Oldham County where he started a dog kennel business. Mm -hmm. During her senior year of high school, she met her sweetheart, Mr. Rowan Taylor. Mm -hmm. They uh, were married and had two daughters. Mr. Taylor had a successful laundry business in uh, Oldham County. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, in 1931, he lost his life unexpectedly due to a ruptured appendix. Gosh, he was young. Very young. That's sad. And so Miss Taylor went on to run the business, raise her two daughters, and she was considered a very modern woman because in the 1930s, that was just kind of unheard of. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, for sure. So at some point, she did meet a gentleman named Mr. Henry Denhart. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And they were in a serious relationship. There's various reports if they were engaged or if they were planning to get engaged. Uh, but there is confirmation that there was a $20,000 engagement ring. So I would say that that's pretty serious. First, before you go any further, tell them the crazy part of this story. Well, Who was Mr. Mr. Um, Henry Denhart was a former lieutenant governor of Kentucky. Yeah. So, so guys, that takes it a little... Um, Makes it just a little little bit crazier here. I mean, it's a sad story to begin with, but mm -hmm. Lieutenant Governor of Kentucky, that's wild. So, um, and definitely remember his name for future videos, by the yes. way. Yes, and he is quoted saying that Miss Renna Taylor was the prettiest woman two counties around. So he had his eye on her. Yes. Must have. All right, all right. Let's continue about him and their relationship, I guess. So on the night that she had passed, she had told her friends and family that she was planning to end the relationship with Mr. Henry. However, there are various reports about this because Mr. Henry has a different version of his story. Yeah, yeah, I bet he does. Heck, I mean, if you're the lieutenant governor and you're out being accused of things, I'm sure he had some stories. Yes. All right, so Kels, what happened that night? So the night in question is November 6, 1936. It was a chilly evening. Henry and Miss Verna had gone into Louisville to have dinner, mm -hmm. and Miss Verna was planning to go back to Oldham County later that evening to chaperone one of her daughter's dances. It's reported that she had a headache, so they went on a drive to get some fresh air. Mm -hmm. While on that drive on Highway 146 in Oldham County, just over the Henry County line, mm -hmm. Henry's car stalled out. Um, while he was trying to restart it so many times, he ended up killing the battery. Mm -hmm. um, reports say that Verna went up to a service station to get assistance. Um, some reports say that they only went to the baker's house. Uh, either way, they did push the car into the driveway of the baker's and waited for help. So the baker's was a, it was a family house? A family lived nearby? Or something? Yeah, so they were the farmers that uh, they had pushed their car into their driveway while they waited for a mechanic to come and help. So the farmers were like, hey, you can put your car in my driveway. Yes, okay. to get them off of the main road. Because uh, okay. the area is very rural, it's very dark, um, and there's kind of a, a curve in the road, so it's mm -hmm. kind of dangerous to sit out on the road waiting for help. Well, back then, too, it's not like a you call a wrecker to come pick you up. Yes. <laughs> there wasn't AAA around back no, then. No, there wasn't. Um, so they had pushed the car into the Baker's driveway. Uh -huh. um, at some point, Verna had walked away from the car to look for a glove that she had dropped when they had pushed the car. And then a gunshot rung out. So wait, was she even wearing gloves that night? Do they, is there any report to that? Or? Um, there is confirmation that she was wearing gloves that night, and okay. it was reported to be a very chilly evening. So it was the, I wonder if they found one glove off and one glove on. Um, I don't know because I haven't been able to access the actual autopsy report. Yeah, wouldn't that have been nice if we could? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Hard to get info back then. So. Yes. So, so do they think like 
Or they, the police think Henry did it? So, uh, at the time that the shot had rung out, mm -hmm. Mr. Baker, the farmer, had thought that he had heard two shots. Okay. At this point, a mechanic had showed up with a battery to replace in Mr. Henry's car. Uh -huh. He had heard one, and Henry had heard one. Okay. Um. So, again, there's kind of various reports about what was heard. Um, but at the time that the shot went off, Miss Verna was not around and mm -hmm. Henry was not concerned. He said, just fix the vehicle. If she's not back by the time the car is fixed, then we can go look for her. Uh, so the battery is replaced. She's still not around. So they begin a search for her. Her body was located about 200 yards from the vehicle in a ditch. Okay. Yeah. Um, so immediately Mr. Henry had said it was suicide. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And he's quoted saying, ain't that something. Ain't that something. So wait, they find his possibly fiance or mm -hmm. soon to be fiance dead in a ditch on the side of the road. Mm-hmm. And all he says was, well, ain't that something. Yes. Okay. Because then th was he there says that she committed suicide. But someone said they heard two shots, right? Yes. But we don't have confirmation if there's one bullet hole or two bullet holes, right? There was just one. We do. Okay. Good. Well, then that kind of... That kind of tells you. Yeah. So, uh, the police do their investigation. They find evidence of murder. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Henry um, was found to have gunshot residue on his hands and okay. also blood splatter on his clothes. Now, did she, the victim? She her? did not have any gunshot residue on her hands. Okay. So, the case goes to trial and the jury, it, it's a hung jury. Okay. Which leads to a mistrial. Okay. Um, they're split because some believe that she did commit suicide. Some believe that it was murder. Okay. So since they were deadlocked, it was deemed a mistrial. Mm -hmm. And then the trial was reset for September of 1937. Okay. And the case was moved from Oldham County to Shelby County. Uh, since it was previously deadlocked. Well, for y'all that's not from Kentucky, Shelby County and Oldham County, they're... Like neighboring they're counties. They're neighboring counties. So, mm -hmm. yeah, probably Shelbyville from Crestwood, probably. Yes. But that's kind of LaGrange. is kind of the, the big towns there. So, that's probably a 45-minute drive, I'd say. 30 yes. minutes, 30, 40. Which, back then, would be a little bit more significant compared to now. Yeah, as far long, as moving it. Long dirt road. Yes. <laughs> so, um, so the night before the trial, Mr. Henry was in Shelbyville preparing. Uh, there was a hotel there at the time called Armstrong Hotel. He was with his attorney uh, and had wrapped up um, preparation for the night. Mm -hmm. And he had drove back to the hotel. And as he was walking up to the hotel... Miss Verna's three brothers are parked and get out of a vehicle. Oh, wow. Okay. So the so brothers rolled up on them. The brothers rolled up on them. Yeah. The brothers claim that Mr. Henry was reaching for something. So in self-defense, they shot him. They, yeah. Seven okay. shots rung out. Okay. They immediately surrendered to the police. Uh -huh. They went on trial a month later. The judge uh, listened to all the testimony and within an hour dismissed the case. And they were set free and had agreed it was in self-defense. So ju justice was, uh, to them, it was served, right? Because they're, yes. they're feeling like, hey, he killed my sister. Mm -hmm. It's time for a little old Southern justice to take place. Yes. Sounds like that's what happened. Yes. Yeah, because we have to remember, as much as uh, we feel like he, he killed Miss Verna, there was never a guilty verdict. No. So that's something you have to remember is that Mr. Henry was never, uh, he was, he was accused, but he was never actually charged because yeah. uh, he didn't make it through the second trial. Um, so there's still a lot of accusations out there. Um, there's two really great books that have been written about this case that I recommend going and reading if you have the time, or even if you just do a good um, online search. There's a lot of information out there, and I'd be curious to know if you think that this was a suicide or murder. Yes, and we, Kelsey and I actually went back to the area where we believe they found her, mm -hmm. and also where uh, the farmhouse was was at at the time. I, I don't know if it's around anymore. We the ones we found, the houses in that area that we 
was told to look at were kind of newer houses. Yes, it almost had looked like um, either renovations were done or the previous house might have been bulldozed and then a new build was done. Yeah, because we didn't see any old lapidated farm homes like we were told there was. So had to have been something like that. But we went to the, to the area and we didn't see anything. It is a big, steep, just ditches out there. A lot of ditches. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you know, she was just thrown in a in a ditch somewhere or laying in the bottom of one of them ditches. That's mm -hmm. just, ah, it's horrible to think about. So, all right, Kelsey, got any more info on this uh, this case here? This No, that about happened? wraps up uh, all the information that you need to know for Miss Verna Taylor. All right. All right, good deal. All right, y'all, it's a windy one today, so we are doing this conversation from the car. But I promise it's going to be a good one the wind ain't gonna mess with us i just wanted to show you their headstones here there's mr rowan trying to make sure i got that and the, the sun's out all right we got mr rowan and then miss verna so i just wanted to show you up close all right miss verna my name's josh and this is my beautiful wife kelsey we come in peace and light and love, and we mean no disrespect or no ill intent, ma'am. And uh, we explained what we were doing here earlier, but uh, we just wanted to, to let the, the folks that are watching know what we're doing. And today, we're actually coming to speak to you, Miss Verna, because we want to make sure you're resting in peace. Uh, we want to make sure that your name is in a positive light and your story gets out. Uh, we want the world to know that your spirit and our spirit are just the same and they're just as important as the other. And, um, you know, I always like to say when you when you pass away, the, the spiritual realm, it's not all ghosts and goblins. There's a lot of peace, a lot of peace, a lot of forgiveness, a lot of love on the other side. So we wanted to just come and show you our respect and um, hear your side of the story on the event that took place, if you don't mind. Um, I don't. I know you probably haven't got to speak to to anybody in this in this fashion, at least. And uh, we just want your side of the story, ma'am, and, and your truths to be to be heard. Uh, again, we do come in respect and peace and light and love. Um, so, Kels, uh, you want to go ahead and hit the button, and we'll just see if she wants to speak to us today. Yeah. Man, would you like to speak to us today? Permission, ma'am. All right. All right. Mission. I think I heard mission. Uh, again, man, we will have to go back and review all your responses, but I want you to know, Miss, your name, your story, and your voice will not go unheard, ma'am. All right. Well, since I heard some confirmation, I know Kelsey did too. We're going to go ahead and, and jump into it. So, uh, first, I want to make sure: are, are you resting peacefully, ma'am? Yes, are you resting peacefully with your husband and with your children? Kelsey, you want to ask the, the next question here? 
Yes, Miss Verna, you were considered a modern woman in the 1930s because you were a widow, a mom of two, and you were running um, a family business. We were curious, was that difficult for you or did you have support from others? All right, that's a good question, Kels. <laughs> question for you with with everything that happened that night and uh, you unfortunately passing away there's a lot of uh, rumors and speculations that that night you were going to he was going to propose to you and you were going to just basically cut all ties you didn't want anything to do with him anymore and you were gonna just go your separate ways uh, is that true ma'am was that the night that you were gonna just cut all ties with mr. Uh, Henry ma'am the next question I want to make it clear that the situation that happened uh, we you know mr. Henry was was never found guilty of anything because he uh, was deceased before 
before everything went down, before decisions were made and well, before the second trial, right, Kels? Mm -hmm. So he was never found guilty because he, he wasn't around. Um, so I just want to make that clear. We're not disrespecting Mr. Henry or, or, or anybody uh, attached to this uh, situation, this incident that took place. He, he was never found guilty because he was not, he was not living. So I want to make that clear. We're not, not bashing anybody. So we do come in full respect. All right, Kelsey, you want to jump to the next question? Yes. Um, so we've read different accounts um, from that night that state um, that Henry and you, Miss Verna, had pushed the car into the farmer's driveway, and then later you went to look for a glove that was missing. Is that statement true? Is that the reason you walked away from the car that night? All right, good question. <laughs> we have I, that that night there was reports made and, and statements made that um, you were invited you both were invited into the farmers home to I guess wait on on help and that it was declined that the offer to come in and wait inside was declined now was that from you or from him who declined it <laughs> Oh, we know. Like, right. 
control. All right, Kelsey. All right, and, and man, before Kelsey asks this next question, it is a little bit of a, a heavier question. Uh, again, nothing disrespectful. We're just trying to um, trying to get your side of things and uh, get your truth out there. So, Kelsey, you want to go ahead and ask uh, Miss Verna the next question? Yes. So, Miss Verna, on the night of the incident, when the trigger was pulled and the gun went off, were you holding the gun or was Henry holding the gun? All right. And again, that's in full respect, ma'am. question is um so mr henry mr henry went on trial it was a mistrial they had to do a retrial during that time of the the two trials mr henry lost his life um and i i'm sure you know the the, the rumors and the speculations around that uh involving uh some siblings of yours so my question is ma'am do you feel that Justice was served against Henry. Do you feel that that it was served? Jack, are we okay, buddy? Mm -hmm. 
apologize to you my hand my my camera is shaking <laughs> i'm at a weird angle and so i'm trying to get as straight on as i can and the camera keeps moving and i do apologize for that um but all right Kels, i think we're getting close to, to towards the end i do have a question though ma'am miss verna ma'am is there is there any message uh that you'd like to share with the world um i know this is a rare opportunity and there might be something you've been wanting to say for many years. So is there a message that you'd like to share, ma'am? All right. things do you need do you need prayer today would you like us to pray for peace for you or uh, anybody i guess around us that needs a little peace do you would you like us to say a prayer of peace over you camera here take a quick break we're gonna pray over you and we'll be right back all right miss verna well we just got done finishing a prayer for you and your husband and really any spirits that are attached to this area that's around us that need a little peace uh we prayed over over all y'all so hopefully you feel better i'm gonna have kelsey hit the button i just want to see how you feel now since we prayed over you how you feel <laughs> Something up. 
This is probably our last question to you. It's kind of a two-part question, I guess. Um, but I'm very curious. Have you ever spoken to anybody in this way that, that you're speaking with us right now? And also, can we come back and, and speak to you again, ma'am? You and your husband sometime. All right, Kels. <laughs> Walter, are we okay, sir? And you So, when I'm so. All right. Well, ma'am, thank you so much for speaking with us today. Thank you to your husband for, uh, I'm not sure if he came in at all, but I'm glad he is uh, there and we did hear you guys are uh, together. So that's incredible. I'm, I'm, I'm very glad for that. So thank y'all so much for speaking with us. Thank you for the respect and, and hospitality you showed us today. And um, we just ask that you both rest in peace and uh, rest in light. 